fiery horse with a speed of light, a clot of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. His faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? The Lone Ranger and Tonto had made their camp for the night in the forest near the banks of the Missouri. Tonto was cooking the evening meal while the masked man was studying a map. Mm. The next landing to the north is called Goodrich's. Mm, that's right. Fellow named Slim Goodrich. Him live there with son. Cut wood, sell to riverboat. This second spring, them there. Do they know you, Tonto? Well, me stopped there one time. You better stop there again tomorrow morning. Find out if he's seen anything of Rio or his men. Ah. They haven't much information to work on, Toto. Well, then tell you at Fort Lookout, Kimasabi. Rio between here and Fort Benton. Yes, that takes in a lot of territory. <laughs> What's the matter, Silver? Him hear something, maybe. Not to hear it now. Yes, someone's coming this way. He put out fire. We'll just get out of the clearing and wait back among the trees. Come on, Silver. Here's Scott. Come, Father. The Lone Ranger and Tonto took cover in the forest and watched the lighted circle around the campfire. The sound of running footsteps stopped, and they could see a dim figure among the trees on the other side of the clearing. Then it emerged into the light. It was a woman. Her dress was torn, her face was scratched, and she carried a shotgun. She's frightened, Tonto. Ah, uh, her plenty scared. I wonder who she is. What could a woman be doing around here? Suddenly, the woman started running directly toward the Lone Ranger and Tonto. We'll have to stop her and find out what this is all about. Ah. Please, wait a minute. We don't want to hurt you. Take your hands off me or I'll shoot. I'm sorry, I can't let you do that. Uh, no, give me back that gun. Wait, we want to help you. Can't you understand? Now, why are you running? Why are you afraid? You can't make me go back there. I won't. Back where? You're one of them. That mask proves it. You're an outlaw like the rest. You killed my husband and my son, didn't you? No, ma'am. Won't you please Some listen Some of you for... did. They're dead, aren't they? Slim and Kit both. Are you talking about Slim Goodrich and his son? As if you didn't know. And you're Mrs. Goodrich? Let me go. I have a little money. I'll give it all to you. Just let me go. Not until you tell me why you think your husband and your son are dead. What else can I think? They're not at the landing. You and your outlaw friends have moved in. You don't suppose I still believe that story about their going hunting? Mrs. Goodrich, is there a man named Rio at the landing? Don't you know where your own boss is? He isn't my boss. I've been looking for him for the past month. 
To join up with him? No, to capture him and take him back to Fort Lookout. What? I'm not an outlaw. You must believe me. Now, please, for your own sake, for the sake of your husband and your son, tell me all you know about Rio. I... Now, what, Silver? He must have it. Many men come this way. We'll get you away, Mrs. Goodrich, to some place where it's safe. I can't believe it. You must. It. You can ride with me. Here, Silver. Swiftly, the Lone Ranger and Tonto saddled Silver and Scout. Tonto scattered and stamped out the campfire. The Lone Ranger helped Mrs. Goodrich into the saddle. Then... Come on, Silver. Get him off, Scout. They rode deep into the forest before they reined up and prepared to make a fresh camp. But this time, they lighted no fire. Mrs. Goodrich was finally convinced the Lone Ranger and Tonto were only trying to help her. She told them all she knew about Rio and his men and the events that led up to her running away from the landing. Slim came out here two years ago for his health, and Kit came with him. But I was afraid. I'd heard so many stories. The Indians, the massacres, hold-ups, outlaws. Slim's my husband, and Kit's my son. And for two years, I've been ashamed of myself. This spring, I decided I had to join them. So I took the Prairie Bell from St. Louis. It docked at the landing this afternoon. Or I should say it stopped for a minute to put me off. It didn't need any fuel. And your husband and your son weren't around? No. Rio and Spur were there. They said Slim and Kit had gone hunting. And you don't know why Rio's taken over the landing? There's a lot of wood there that Kit and Slim cut this winter. He can sell it to the boats. That doesn't sound like big enough money for him. I don't know. He has a gang of 20 men with him. All I care about right now is my husband and my son. And that's all I care about. We'll find out where they are, Mrs. Goodrich. If only they're alive. Kimosabe. Yes? 20 men. Maybe it's better we bring troops from Fort Lookout. That's a long way. We'll have to see what we can do ourselves first. We'll have to find out what Rio's planning. And Slim and Kit. We'll try to find them the very first thing in the morning. It was long after midnight when Spur and Jake and the other men returned to the cabin at the landing. Rio, handsome in a way, but with a hard mouth and a vicious light in his eyes, rose from his chair as they opened the door. The men were silent, watching him as he walked toward them. He stopped in front of Spur, his lips curled. And then he deliberately slapped Spur's face. <coughs> Boss, you haven't found them. Why have you come back? The moon's gone down. We couldn't see anything. We did our best, boss. Your best? Couldn't you even find the woman's trail? Yes, we did. But she met somebody in the clearing downstream from here. Somebody that had horses. She rode away with him. Her husband? I don't know. It couldn't have been Slim, Rio. He didn't take a horse when he got away from here. There were two horses. And you couldn't follow them? We lost the trail at a creek. We... We couldn't pick it up again. Yeah, you fools. There wasn't enough light. We'll follow it in the morning. Now listen to me, the lot of you. This whole thing is too important for me to stand any more bungling. We'll find them. You've got to find them. The boy was hit, I swear it. He can't have gone far. We're out for $50,000 in gold. It's coming on that boat from Fort Benton. Maybe 100000 If we pull this off, we're rich. If we don't, we're back to hiding in the woods. Living like animals, being hunted like animals. One word of warning would be enough to spoil everything. Rio, it was you that stopped us from putting a bullet through Slim and the kid right at the start. Yeah. You figured it would be better if they were around. I don't mind that. I'm giving you an order now to shoot them on sight. Get them out of the way or you'll answer to me. Is that understood? Well, sure, boss, but can't we sleep a little now? Just a few oh, hours? You make me sick. Go on, Sleep. But get out of here at the crack of dawn, and don't come back until you finish the job. We'll finish it this time. At daybreak, the Lone Ranger and Tonto were hiding in the woods back of the landing. They saw half a dozen men saddle their horses and ride downstream. They're going after Mrs. Goodrich again. Ah, but them not pick up trail, Kimasabi. Tonto plenty careful last night. No, but that old deer trail runs close to the cave. Oh, I'm not sea cave. I'll stand guard here, Tonto. Scout around and see what you can find. Uh, there was no activity around the landing during the hour that the Lone Ranger waited for Tonto to return. And when the Indian appeared once more, 
He carried several dried leaves in his hand. What do you have there, Kimosabe? A tantrifying trail made by two men over that way. Really? You look at leaves here. Dark spots on them. Ah, and that blood. Somebody was wounded. That right. Trail may be one day old. You can follow it? Tonto thinks so. Then let's go. It better we lead horses. All right. Come on, Silver. Come, Scout. Come, Silver. To the north and east of the landing in a tangled hollow was a log cabin abandoned by a trapper many years before. It stood in a small clearing, but was completely overgrown with vines now. Inside, Kit Goodrich lay on the floor, his head pillowed on his father's coat. Slim bent over him. Another drink, Kit? No, Pa. Are you feeling any better? Pa, I'm done for. Don't say that, son. I know. Listen to me. What? Don't stay here any longer. Get away. I'm not going without you. Yes. You must. They're looking for us. They'll find this cabin before long. I've got my shotgun. So many of them. Get away now. Before it's too late. No, kid. You must, Paul. You know what they're up to. Go to the next landing. Upstream. Stop the boat. Send a message to Fort Lookout. We'll do that when you're able to travel. No, no anymore, Pa. Give me your hand. Here, son. No, it's all over. Goodbye, Pa. Kit. Kit. No, no, Kit. Kit, hear your heart. Oh, kid. The dirty killers. I'll get them. I'll make them pay for this. They'll know they've been in a fight before they've finished. The dirty killers. The Lone Ranger and Tonto walked through the forest with Silver and Scout following them. Just as they reached the hollow where the trapper's cabin stood, they heard a distant shout. Where did they come from, Tonto? The landing? No. No, it's closer than landing. In that way. So those men we saw start out are circling around. Ah. But them not come close to cave where women stay. No, but they may be heading in this direction. Maybe so. Here. You look at this ranch, Kimasabi. Oh, more blood stains. Ah. Time to think man and boy in cabin. Me crawl close. Make sure, huh? Good idea. You wait here, Kimasabi. Right. As Tonto crawled toward the cabin, there was hardly a movement of the bushes to betray his presence. But the Lone Ranger was able to follow his progress almost to the door. Then suddenly, Tonto stood up. Kimosabe, you come quick. That boy in here, quick back. Come on, Silver. The masked man ran across the little clearing, and when he entered the cabin, he found Tonto bending over Kit's still form. Here, Kimosabe, this Goodrich boy. Is he dead? No. Tonto get bandage from saddlebag, medicine, herb, make drink. Go ahead. Tonto returned in a few seconds and carefully dressed the wound. The Lone Ranger had started a fire in the old stove and placed a tin cup full of water on it. Tonto had just begun to prepare the herb drink when Slim stepped into the doorway of the cabin with his shotgun leveled. You're covered what? up with your hands. This father, a boy. Put down that gun, Slim. Not a chance. This is where I start to get even. Maybe it wasn't either of you two that killed my boy, but there's more than one that's going to pay for it. You're the first. I'm going to blow you both in the kingdom come. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. Slim Goodrich, believing his son to be dead and certain that the Lone Ranger and Toto were members of Rio's gang, leveled his shotgun at them. You shot Kit now, I'm going to shoot you. Your son isn't dead, Slim. Don't lie to me. I'm telling you the truth. He isn't dead. But he will be if you don't put down that gun and give Toto a chance to take care of him. I listened. I, I couldn't hear his heartbeat. He's still alive. It'll be your fault if he dies. You mean you try to save him? All we ask is a chance. You're not part of Rio's gang? No. But you're mad. There's no time to argue about it. Do you want your son to live or not? Well, it may be a trick, but I've got to take the chance. Yes, please. Please save him. That's better. Go ahead, Tunnel. Ah. Do it. When Tonto's brew was ready, the Lone Ranger cradled the boy's head in his arms, and he was able to drink most of the cup. Then he sank back. The masked man covered him with blankets, and before long, the easy rise and fall of his chest and a stronger pulse pro- proved the crisis was past. Slim studied the boy's face. I, I think there's a little color in his cheeks now. Yes, I think so, too. Whoever you are, whatever you are, don't make any difference to me. I'm on your side, mister. And we're on your side, Slim. Against Rio? Yes. Now we have some news for you. For me? Your wife's here. My wife? She, she's in St. Louis. She arrived at the landing yesterday afternoon. And she fought... You mean Rio's got her a prisoner? Mask man, I... Wait, wait, Slim. She's perfectly safe. She was Rio's prisoner, but she ran away. Todd and I helped her to find a hiding place. Where? Only a few miles from here. We'll take you to her as soon as it's safe. It won't be safe in this neck of the woods as long as Rio's around. That's why we must get rid of him. What's he up to? At the landing? Well, when the first boat with gold from Fort Benton stops there, he'll hold it up. He won't hold up the first one. There'll be a company of soldiers on board heading back to St. Louis. Then it'll be the second one. Unless we make sure it's the first. Huh? The first boat from Benton is due to pass here any day now. I'm going to ride upstream and stop it. Warn the captain that Rio's here, and then we'll... Otto, Silver, here's something. Isn't that right? The men from the landing. Ah, and them come this way. Quickly, the Lone Ranger and Toto prepared for a siege. Silver and Scout were led into the woods in back of the cabin, and the masked man and the Indian had no sooner returned than they heard the sound of horsemen forcing their way through the underbrush and heading toward the clearing. The door of the cabin was slammed shut, and the Lone Ranger and Toto took their positions at the two small windows. I'll take the first one, Toto. Uh-huh. The Lone Ranger's first shot caught Spur in the arm. The outlaws dismounted, took cover, and started firing on the cabin. The Lone Ranger and Toto returned their fire. For five minutes, the forest echoed with a roar of gunshots. And then the outlaws learned to respect the aim of the men defending the cabin. And the shooting was faced at longer and longer intervals during the next few hours. But there was no indication of giving up the siege from Rio's men. Spur, with a bandage around his right arm, was directing their fire. Don't waste your ammunition. Don't shoot unless you can see him. You heard me, Jay. I thought I saw the Indian. You listen. Somebody riding this way from the landing. It's real. Don't show yourself, boss. They're in the cabin across this clearing. <laughs> Who's in the cabin? Keep low, boss. Who's in the cabin? I saw a slim ones. Uh, Over to the boys. We haven't seen them yet, but there's an Indian and another hombre. Looks like he's wearing a mask. A mask. Yeah. Hey, you're loco. Must be the trapper who lives here. Why haven't you rushed the place before this? Let me see. Watch it. Why, that dirty... Did you get hit? No. You can see why we haven't gone after them. They shoot straight. Yeah. All right. Leave them where they are. What? You're all coming back to the landing with me. But, I boss, said, you said... I said get the Goodriches so they couldn't warn anybody what we're up to. Well, it's too late for that now. First boat from Fort Benton is only a few miles up the river. It's late in the afternoon. They're sure to stop for the night at the landing. You hear that, boys? Tonight's the night. Well, I want you all inside the cabin at the landing before the boat docks. Spur and I'll be the only ones who can now to meet the boat. But as soon as they put down the gang plank... That's what we've been waiting for, boss. Yeah, come on. Neither Goodrich is here. You expect them to follow us? I don't know. I do. They'll hightail it. That suits me. Come on. Come on. Come on. (laughs) 
The Lone Ranger and Tonto could hear Rio and his men riding back through the forest toward the river. You're going after them? Yes, Slim. Just two of you? Rio's planning to stir up a hornet's nest. We'll make sure that he doesn't escape their sting. That's right. Fifteen minutes later, the Lone Ranger and Tonto dismounted on the edge of the clearing. A steamboat whistle sounded up the river. There she comes. That right. Tonto think all outlaws inside cabin. You look, horses in corral, back of cabin. They'll need them for their getaway. Ah, and there's no wind in back of cabin. Yes, I'm thinking the same thing you are. We could get to the corral from here without being seen. Ah. We'll wait and see what happened from the boat docks. Boat come now? Yes, there's two of the men starting down to the landing. Ah, one of them, Rio, maybe. From the descriptions we've heard, the bigger man must be he. There are plenty of soldiers on boat. Yes, Rio sees them. My guess is that he's changing his plans, Toto. Ah. But it doesn't matter. There are enough charges against him already. All we have to do is make sure that he's captured. It was true, Rio was changing his plans. And as the boat nosed into the dock, he gave Spur new instructions. Get back to the cabin fast. Tell everybody to lay low until dark. We're not going to tangle those uniforms. Right, period. The boat was made fast, the gangplank lowered, and the first two men down it were the captain and the lieutenant in charge of the troops on board. Welcome to Goodrich Landing. Well, hello. I don't believe I've seen you before. My name's Smith. I'm in charge here while Slim's away. I see. Well, we need some fuel. There's plenty all kept waiting if you have them in to load it. Yes, indeed. I'll get them at it right away. Captain. Yes, Lieutenant? Look who's riding out from the woods to orders. Mask man. Yes, you know him, don't you? An outlaw? Well, I'll take care of him. Are you crazy, Smith? Give me that gun. No. I said give it to me. That masked man is the Lone Ranger. Hey, Lone Ranger? Smith, where are you going? Rio had been thinking fast. A masked man. A masked man who was really the Lone Ranger. A masked man who had been in the cabin with Slim Goodrich. I've got to make a break for it. I haven't got a gun, but I've got my knife. There's no time to warn the others. In another minute, the lieutenant would know Rio's real identity. His own horse of magnificent chestnut was standing in front of the cabin, and he leaped to the saddle. Get up there! Get up there! As he disappeared into the forest, the Lone Ranger reined up beside the captain and the lieutenant. Oh, hold there, Silver. Oh, easy. Howdy, masked man. Meet Captain Daly. Hello, Lieutenant. Good evening, Captain. Good evening, sir. That man you were just talking to was Rio. The outlaw? Rio. Twenty of his men are in that cabin. You round them up. Look, they're coming out. Get after them, Lieutenant. We've driven off their horses. They can't go far. All right, sir. I'm going after Rio. One, two, All right, All right, sir. It was getting dark when Rio first realized that what he had thought was the echo of the chestnut's hoofs was actually the sound of another horse behind him. He made a mistake. He could have turned into the tangled undergrowth, but sure of the chestnut's speed, he continued along a trail that led out of the forest and into a wide open valley. Come on now, let's go! The chestnut answered his command with a burst of speed that reassured Rio. Reassured him until he turned in his saddle and saw the great white stallion flash from the forest and the distance between the masked man and himself being closed with every second. Rain up! You'll never get me! Run, Diablo! The Lone Ranger had been expecting the outlaw to open fire, but as he drew closer, he saw that Rio's holster was empty, and he urged Silver on. Monsilla! Now Silver lengthened his tremendous stride. His silver shod hoof spurned the ground. The chestnut tried gallantly, desperately to respond to Rio's quirk, on, but there was no horse in the West that could match Silver's speed. He was at the chestnut's flank, his saddle, his withers. Now nose and nose they raced. As the Lone Ranger made no move for his gun, Rio knew that the stories he had heard were true. He would never use a gun on an unarmed man, and hope came back. He swerved aside from the trail. The Lone Ranger held Silver to the side of the chestnut. For the last time, right up, you'll have to shoot to stop me. No, you're wrong. The masked man leaned toward the racing chestnut and grasped Rio around the waist. Rio felt himself being lifted from the saddle, and instead of resisting, he threw himself at the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger was knocked from the saddle, and the two men fell to the ground with the masked man underneath. Rio's fall was broken. In a flash, his knife was out, and he raised it, ready to plunge it into the Lone Ranger's heart. But a hand of steel grasped his wrist and stopped the downward thrust at the last minute. Back. Slowly, he forced Rio's hand back, inch by inch. A sudden twist, and the knife flew into a clump of bushes. 
Leo wrenched himself free and sprang to his feet. I told you you'd have to use your gun. There are better ways of handling your kind. The Lone Ranger's right caught Rio's jaw, and Rio charged back at him. Even larger than the masked man and confident of his strength, he was determined to win. And at first, the fight seemed to go in his favor. The Lone Ranger was forced to give ground to his bull-like rushes. But then he started moving in, and with a sure skill, his blows were driven home. A right and left, and a right and left again. And now Rio was sobbing with exhaustion. Another right to the jaw, and he dropped to his knees. His shoulders sagged. Oh, God, don't hit me again. I've had enough. I've done more. You're finished. That's what you mean, Rio. You're going to spend the rest of your life in jail. When the Lone Ranger returned to the landing, he found that the soldiers had rounded up the rest of the gang, and Rio was placed in irons with them. The following morning, Captain Daly's boat started down the river with its full cargo of soldiers, gold, and outlaws. The Goodriches waved goodbye from the doorway of their cabin, and even Kit was able to watch from his cot near the window. Adios. Goodbye. Well, Annie, there she goes. Yes, Slim. Are you sure that you won't mind it here with just Kit and me? You know better. You won't be lonely? You won't be afraid? Lonely? With the two people who mean most to me in the world? Oh, of course not. And afraid? Why, no, Slim. I know that no matter what happens, we'll always have a friend in need. A friend indeed. We couldn't have a better friend than the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.